What's up, you guys? Hey, it's John with Vision 365 Financials. Today, we're going to cover a handful of awesome paying dividend stocks. So, we're going to swap it up a little bit. I like to do different things, different ways to create income, right? Long term income and growth. We see, uh, you know, recently uh, Facebook dumped like over 20% uh, in one day of trading and you know and then we also have to figure not only did it dump that much it uh lost over 200 billion dollars of valuation so this is why obviously tech stocks are going to get revalued especially as we go into a bear market and we're already pretty much in a bear market so dividends are going to be king besides tax-free iuls if any of that interests you subscribe and i really appreciate it let's begin all right eversource so eversource raises their dividend by 5.8 Right, marking the 22nd year of consecutive annual increases. Eversource is electric utility. They pay a starting yield of almost a 2.9. They're rated as 88, so a very safe dividend safety uh, score. Also, that dividend growth over, uh, you know, since February of 22 has been about a 5.8. So not bad growth here, guys. And then we see that that starting price is over $88 as a market cap of just about $30.5 billion. So nothing like Facebook, also a lot less volatile, definitely not even close to volatile. And we see electric companies are going to be set to really prosper in this bear market and also in this new decade because of all the new energies and everything else coming online. That being said, the payout ratio is 62% and 61% for that forward going into this year. So that is not bad, guys. Uh, it's well under the 70% that I like to see. And then uh, we also see that, you know, something, another key metric, like I said, it's increased its dividend during the 2008 uh, crisis. So that's very good. So I like to see that even though maybe the sales and everything else was down a little bit, they were able to still stay afloat and be able to raise that dividend. So that speaks to the company. Now we see over the last 20 years, they have raised that dividend by 20%. So 20% is good growth, guys, and that's your rear, and that doesn't even include dividends reinvested. And then what I also like to look at is some of the other metrics. So we see all the different payout ratio, or excuse me, payments that they made. We also see the uh, yield curve over the long term. And uh, we see also this one here is priced just almost on par, slightly above the utilities in the index. So it's not really richly valued, but it's, it's almost on par. We also see, obviously, the earnings, like I said, is well below the 70, 75, like we like to see. I like to look at, uh, which you can't always look at the free cash flow and per share because utilities are different. They can write off a lot of different things. So that's something else uh, that sometimes you have to look past. And then also you want to look at the earnings per share that's been steadily increasing. And then we also want to look at how many shares outstanding. So they've only increased them just, you know, slightly over the time. So that's not bad. They're not diluting them a lot. And then we see the sales gone up, you know, steadily over the long term. And return on equity has stayed pretty constant. And then we look down here and we see their interest coverage is also uh, above any metric. So that's pretty good. So let's jump into the next one. All right. So the next one we want to look at is also in the utility sector. So like I said, utilities are primed to really go this upcoming decade. And this one has a starting yield of just almost a 3.6%. The uh, price to start out is just over $60 a share currently. Market cap of just over $18 billion. And the dividend safety score was cut a little bit due to, uh, you know, the recent pandemic and whatnot. So they had to undergo a little bit. Uh, but this one is has a global presence. And so they, uh, you know, like I said, they have a lot of different uh, partnerships and they also have a lot of diversification as well throughout but we see that their payout ratio and forward pe is only 30 percent for forward pe going into this year which is very low for master limited partnership and uh, master limited partnerships also have their tax advantages um, depending on you know if you use them in a taxable or non-taxable account and then also we see they maintained their dividend street during you know 07 09 uh, still a newer company at that point, though, but we see their last 10 years growth was 10% year over year average, which is phenomenal. That's double digit dividend growth, plus also that doesn't include dividends reinvested. Now, we see obviously you're going to get a K1 for the uh, type of form you're going to get during tax time, so it's not a 1099. 
And then we also see uh, some of their core metrics as well. Some of this is not fully on here, right? But we already know the payout ratio, like I said, 30%. So we see this share dilution. Uh, it's become a little diluted, but not terribly, uh, considering this is still a fairly new company. Uh, on the grand scheme of things, it hasn't been around for like 50 years or anything crazy. And we see the return on equity has been pretty good these last few years. Uh, and then we also see the operating margin, not bad. And then what I also like to look at the interest coverage. The interest coverage is a little low, but it's not to where I would be super concerned. This is one that is one that you may want to put on your list, though, to check out. All right, but let's check out the next one, shall we? All right, so here's one, Kimco Realty. And they do uh, real estate, mainly commercial uh, real estate when it comes to like grocery stores and stuff like that chains. Now, this one is definitely a maybe. So... But long term, especially if Jeff Bezos and Amazon try to go to, you know, warehousing and stores and a lot more, they're already wanting to bring on like a closed retail place and stuff like that. Uh, some of these places could take advantage of renting warehouses and stuff to them. But you guys know that obviously they likes to pay for stuff as well and just buy it out. So this is still a maybe though. It's still not a bad company. The starting yield is just over 3% and that dividend growth this past February is raised. It's 12% now. Starting price is a nice low, you know, just over $24. It has a market cap of just over $15 billion. And we can look here. The payout ratio forward PE is 63%, which is very low for a real estate equity index trust, by the way. They typically are 90% or above. And then we see that they did, in fact, cut it during 2009, uh, their dividend streak. And so they do not have that dividend streak because of that as well. Um, so that is something to look at as a concern, right? And we can see over the last you know, 20 years, they had been negative on their dividends. That's mainly due to a lot of the growth and expansion they've done, but that is a concern to look at. Now, we can see also that their recent payments and updates, so they are down right now, but this is something if you're bullish on that sector, you check out uh, if you think it's gonna go up. Personally, my humble opinion, I think it may have a short glimpse where it'll go up uh, in the somewhat you know, maybe near future, possibly. I mean, it's already starting to, but then I think eventually it's going to subside and then curve elsewhere. The only thing that's going to go up is basic necessities like food retailers and stuff like that. Now, <clears throat> we can take a look. Shares outstanding hasn't been increased way too much, so not a lot of pollution. See, the return on equity hasn't been terrible. Operating margin's not bad. And then we look down, interest coverage is above what we would like to see for our metric. So this is one, if you see a potential bullish sector uh, kind of in that consumer space. So let's go to the next one. All right, so the next one's called Corning, ticker symbol GLW, and they are in the information technology sector in electronics. So their starting dividend yield is about just over 2.5%. Starting price is almost $43, and that market cap is $35.5 billion. So... Basically, what they do is a bunch of different, uh, you know, technology stuff, pretty much. Uh, and they do that for, you know, making, like, the um, the actual material for, like, the displays for, like, your screen, stuff like that. Uh, so they make a lot of different things like that. And then uh, they also are fairly diverse, so they do other things with technology as well. So, like, making components, fine components, et cetera. So let's see their metrics, though. So their forward PE is 46%, which is very low, not bad at all. Dividend growth streak has been maintained for 14 years, and they maintain it during the uh, 08 recession as well. So that's good. You see over the last 20 years, their dividend uh, growth rate has been at 11%, so very phenomenal. And we see the latest one was raised in February of 22 this year by 13%. So I love to see that. You see those annual uh, quarterly payments have gone up steadily as well. That's another good thing that I like to see. And then we also see that uh, yield curve is not bad. Information technology is about a, a 20 for price per earnings, but this one is 18.1. So actually, if you buy this one, you're going to get slightly a value. And then we also see, uh, you know, like I said, we already covered the earnings payout, nice below the metric. And we see the earnings per share, uh, you know, steadily increased. And we also see that the shares outstanding, they've been buying back a lot of them. So rather than uh, diluting them, they're actually, if you hold shares, or buy shares with them, they're actually, uh, you know, gaining more uh, intrinsic value because they're actually purchasing more back. So there's less dilution. 
see their total sales have always uh, continued to go on the up curve. And we also see that return on equity has been pretty good these last few years. And then we see the operating margin is not bad. And then we also look at the interest coverage and it's just about on par with what we'd like to see. All right, let's check out another one, shall we? All right, guys, so the next one here is going to be ticker symbol FIS, and it is in the information technology, but this one is in the data processing and outsource service. So this is Fidelity National. Now, their starting yield is a 1.61%. They have a starting price of just over $116 with that market cap of just over $73 billion. That dividend growth is very nice at uh, just the beginning of 22 in January, raised by 21%. So very phenomenal. That's outpacing inflation right there. And then we kind of look at what they do, right? So basically what they do is data transferring, data storage, uh, network servicing, and stuff like that. If we take a look, their payout ratio is very phenomenal. That forward PE is only at 27%, which is very low because uh, they have pretty low upkeep costs as well. So that's another key thing to look at for a good recessionary proof kind of thing. Uh, and obviously a lot of data is always going to be needed and stored no matter kind of where the times are at. We see the dividend growth streak has been good for 17 solid years, and it, it was maintained during the 08 crash as well. We see over the last 10 years that dividend growth has averaged a 21% year-over-year increase, which is very phenomenal, and that does not even include dividends reinvested. We see the uninterrupted dividend growth streak has been 17 years. It is paid out quarterly with that annual payout of about $1.88. Uh, it is a qualified dividend as well. And then also we see the payments have been increasing uh, steadily over that time as well. So we also take a look. It is definitely undervalued compared to the information technology sector, even more so than the last one. Um, and that is 16 and a half payout ratio. So price per earnings versus the information technology sector as a whole is $20. Now we take a look at the uh, PE. We already looked at that nice and low. Earnings per share is looking very good, guys. I love this a lot. Good metric. So very good, very phenomenal. And we can take a look at the shares outstanding. They have creeped up a decent amount, yes, but that it also speaks to the fact that the company is growing as well. Um, so like I said, they still have solid fundamentals when it comes to their earnings and their price and their share growth uh, and then also the sales. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. We see the return on equity has been lower recently though. So that is a little bit of a concern, but that's also because they've got, attained um, a higher you know, a uh, price as well for their share price. Uh, therefore, you know, their growth has slowed down as well. We see their operating margin is above a uh, good metric we like to look at. And we see the interest coverage is just about on par as well. So there's uh, another one to check out, guys. Um, definitely, you know, could be a potential to add to the portfolio. Um, and we could, you know, scroll through these, right? Tractor supply is a pretty good one as well. Uh, tractor supply, obviously, they've been around a lot of places. Um, across the United States anyways. They offer, like I said, all kinds of hardware parts, uh, equipment, stuff like that. That's pretty recessionary as well. Comcast, that's not bad, but let's be honest, certain programs like Netflix and other things are starting to become more prevalent, so I would be leery. Charles Schwab is not a bad one for investment banking and brokerage. Obviously, that's been around a long time. And it's going to continue to be around a long time myself. I do not like to keep money in the market directly. That's why I use Index Universal Life. But for dividend stop paying, uh, it is not bad. Like I said, you know, dividend stop paying, it has been maintained a 31-year dividend streak. So this one is an aristocrat. So pretty phenomenal. And they've maintained a very good growth. So you may want to check out Charles Schwab as well. Uh, maybe to add it. And then Chevron is a good one long term. I think they're they're already trying to pivot into the more renewable sector and they pay a nice, good, juicy dividend yield as well. And they did a 6% increase in January. Intel is another phenomenal one that's part of the portfolio. And Well Tower is another possible one that you may consider looking into. It's in the healthcare sector, uh, specifically in the nursing uh, facility sector. Uh, that being said, um, if you're bullish on that, may check them out. And you may want to check out Anthium as well, which is in managed healthcare as well. And that raised its dividend by 13% recently. So, and they've maintained that payout ever since 2011. So that's also pretty good managed healthcare. We know healthcare is not going anywhere. And Kimberly Clark is another great one. And they are now actually a dividend king, 50th year consecutive increase. So very phenomenal guys. 
Uh, and yeah, so check all those out. I would not check out Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo has been a lot of issues, right? It's had a lot of issues, a lot of lawsuits, stuff like that, a lot of finagling it within the company. But that's just my opinion. Uh, but that's you can read that on the headlines as well. Check all those out, guys. Maybe add a few of them to your portfolio. Uh, also, take a look at my portfolio in the description. And I will see you guys next time.